In hot anticipation of the new Amazon show, The Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power, each week I'll be going back and taking a look at every wave of Middle-Earth Lego sets, starting with the first two waves of The Lord of the Rings thing, and then we're gonna finish with the three Hobbit movie waves as well. After doing all of that, we'll create the definitive list tier ranking of all of the sets. Subscribe so that you can keep up to date with each release, and liking the videos also helps out the channel growth a lot. Thank you very much. With the announcement of the new Hobbit movies that we're releasing in 2012, Lego saw no bit of time than to finally jump onto the Middle Earth bandwagon, but instead of starting with The Hobbit as soon as possible, we were treated to a wave of sets based on the first trilogy of Middle Earth films. Interestingly, this seems to be a concept that some consumers don't seem to agree with by today's standards. The LEGO Avatar sets are horrible. LEGO is 13 years late. While you think the sets would be based on their upcoming Avatar 2 film releasing December 16th, 2022, they're not. Instead, they're releasing sets based on the first film, with rumors that sets will be dropping for the second film, but next year. So let's take a look at LEGO's worst set. None of these sets are based on the upcoming Avatar 2. Yes, for some reason they've made Avatar 2. They're all based on the original film from 2009. Five sets based on a 13-year-old film is a big swing for the LEGO group. In our Lord of the Rings theme, we had a total of 12 sets, seven of those released in 2012, and the final five released in 2013. I won't be going over any of the poly bags or the promotional sets since those aren't easily accessible in stores and they're not even sold worldwide. Did you know New Zealand doesn't sell poly bags? It's ridiculous. Those seven sets from 2012 all launched on June 1st and half of the line was retired by July 2013. The other half though retired in December of that same year. So a total shelf life of one year to one and a half years. 9469 Gandalf Arrives opens our wave with an iconic scene from Fellowship of the Ring. This set retailed at 13 US dollars back then which is around $17 today. It was $30 for me back then, but today the set sealed goes for $118 new or $61 used. Pretty neat, but also pretty basic set. At the time, the only way to get a Gandalf minifigure, which was nice and easy, but boy would this minifigure become common across themes. An exclusive Frodo, if you didn't get that poly bag that I mentioned I wouldn't be talking about, and it's a nice build of a horse carriage that's complete with fireworks, a book, some vegetables, and even a litter. 9470 Shelob Attacks was the first set that I bought from this theme, and I bought it really early I was really lucky on this as well it is the only set from return of the king for now as well and it's a very important set for collectors it was $20 USD back at the time which is around 25 bucks today for me though this set was 50 bucks about $20 more than the US price once you convert FYI today this set is valued at 148 New Zealand dollars sealed or $90 used this set is one of my all-time favorites which you'll probably hear a lot throughout the series of videos I apologize as in advance. Frodo, Sam, and Gollum are still to this day exclusive to this set, so how could you pass this up? Getting a hold of each member of the Fellowship was a pain in the ass back then. Close to half of the group are single set exclusive figures, and we start that trend off with Sam here. A little cave, printing missing eye for Shelob, and a gnarly play feature where you can wrap Frodo up in a web. It's just a great set all around. 9471, the Urukai army was released at $30 USD back then, so $38 today. For me though, this was always a $60 set. Man, it's so expensive, but today it's worth $250 brand new or $178 used. This was Battle Packs Lord of the Rings edition. It's a big old grey wall that can connect onto the Helm's Deep set and make it a lot longer if you wanted it to. In the movie it is pretty long, so a couple more of these and you're good to go. Six minifigures, which is crazy by even today's standards really. Aomir is the only unique figure of this set, though the Rohan Soldier and this specific Urukai are exclusive to the set. I only mention Aomir because he's the only named character of the set. I do like the set overall as an army builder, but I do wish that this had just one more Roharam soldier over an Aomir to add that value of repetition. I personally only have one of these sets, I don't really need multiple, so whatever. Set number 9472, the attack on Weathertop. It was $60 USD back in the day, which is $77 now. This was a $100 set for us, but its value has more than doubled over time. What you're looking at now is $300 sealed or $220 USD used. It's a pretty cool set and it's solid like a rock. There's some traps all around, there's a fireplace with some food, a weird missile play feature and a weapons rack, but the star of the set are the figures. Aragorn would release throughout a few more of these sets, but this set also featured a Frodo with a green cape.
Mary and the Ringwraith minifigures have never made it outside of the Weathertop set. 9473 The Minds of Moria was another banger of a set, a great build and some really great figures to die for. This released at $80 USD back then, which is just over 100 bucks today. It's around 103. This was $160 for me back then. My God, but today it's setting me back over $400 brand new or $296 used. Though be wary of those reddish brown Lego bricks, my set is absolutely no longer worth those prices. The door is completely cracked on my one. The famous cave troll sequence from the Fellowship of the Ring gave us our final fellowship companions in Pippin, Legolas, Gimli, and Boromir. At the time, three of these guys were exclusive until Legolas started re-releasing at rapid fire. We also got two Moria Orcs and two skeletons for good measure, as well as the cave troll big fig. I love, love, love the details of everything here, from just the array of weapons that you can have just lying around, to items like the chains and the bones, and secret compartments with treasures and books. Really fun set all in all, but lordy was she pricey. We close out our regular wave of sets here with 9474, The Battle of Helm's Deep, which released at $130 in the US, which is $167 today, so it's not looking good for me over here oh we were charged $250 back then in 2012 but not to worry because this bad boy is valued at the very fair price of $676 brand new or $537 used. My mum didn't want to buy me this for Christmas at the time because she said that the castle was a boring grey slab, but that, ladies and gentlemen, is why we have aunts and grandmothers. Lego castles are always really cool, but this one doesn't really have a whole lot going on on the inside here. The exterior is really nice, and the figures are pretty great as well, though. It's the same Urukai orcs from the last previous set, but we do get a King Theoden, a Berserker, and Haldir as the exclusives. Always annoyed me that Theoden doesn't have a hair, so I had to steal mine from this alien conquest. Figure. Great printing on the king as well, by the way. Berserkers here, dude's looking scary as hell, and Haldir builds up the elf figures as well. You know, he's Aragorn's mate. <sighs> You also get an Aragorn and a Gimli, eh, whatever. Our final set from the wave comes in the form of 9476, the Orc Forge, which was a store exclusive back then. 40 bucks USD, which is around $51 today. And for me, this was $90 back then, but $245 sealed now, or $180 used. Once this was all built up, I fell in love with the set for the mechanics of it. You get to imagine that you're building the armor for the Orc army, using the winch to slide the metal into the smelting pot. Some great features and fun figures, and also the light up never hurt. The great handprint armor is featured here, but this was also the first set to give the mortal orcs, who are my personal favorites. The one with the hair is exclusive to this set, but he's just the bald orc figure, but with hair, so really how exclusive is he, you know? Thankfully, we get the addition of Lurtz, who can be fitted with the armor that you have just built. They even have his birthing scene here. How neat. That does us for the LEGO Lord of the Rings Wave 1, which is one of my all-time favorite LEGO themes, like many of yours, and also one of the last lines of LEGO that I bought before I stopped collecting for some years. Be sure to come back next week because we'll be finishing the theme with the second wave of sets. If you enjoyed this video, then please be sure to tell us below which set is your favorite, which set is your least favorite. Were you lucky enough to get this at the time? And as always, liking and subscribing really helps out the channel's growth. See you in the next episode of LEGO Refresh.